Hi everyone. Today I'm doing a short video about um, the materials from the Trumpet Yoga book. This is something I return to a lot because I find that in terms of um, developing muscle control and, well, literally playing power and strength, um, this is a very effective tool. Now, um, those who are real sort of Puritans of the TCE system would, would he, or, or maybe even more modern Jerome Callet teaching would say that this this older material is is not so relevant and you know we really should be offsetting a lot of the effort or almost in the entire the entirety of air compression and everything to the tongue but um, you know in practical terms when I'm out gigging on um, gigging every week and you know playing my trumpet every day there are musical situations where it helps to be able to just give it some. Um, you know, this, this particularly comes up when I'm teaching people and they're asking me about jazz improvisation and they don't, uh, the fact that it's very, actually very difficult to, to improvise creatively if you're distracted by thinking about am I doing the right thing with my tongue. Um, and, you know, there are countless things that come up as well in terms of what quality of tone do I want to be making when I perform, perform a given piece of music. And sometimes changing the balance, as in less compression, more quantity of air, um, you know, being able to do that without um, messing everything up here is, um, is, in, is an important tool to have. You know, this is a very practical approach to using this embouchure development technique to making you a better player, a better all-round musician, rather than a, a Puritan of a technique which is not very applicable to music un under certain circumstances. So, um, those who are in regular contact with, with me will know that I'm actually um, in the process of putting together some tutorial videos for the, the tongue control embouchure system. I'm going to be doing a series of 12 or, or more <laughs> It seems to be growing. Twelve or more videos um, about um, TCE and its history and the various <clears throat> types of exercises and routines that we go through to build up the ability to play with the tongue between the teeth. And um, uh, recently, I was I was doing a, a, a first run of my video about Einsetzen, the Einsetzen lip position, and I actually found that. Um, I didn't say all the things I wanted to, and so this is, I'm kind of doing this video as, a, as an opportunity to practice talking about these ideas. Um, now, in the trumpet yoga days, the, the system was basically, um, was all about these double pedal notes. Now, um, when we play double pedal notes following the trumpet yoga system, you have to learn to play um, with your lips completely unfurled and with the mouth, mouthpiece almost completely on the top lip. Now, something that's worth understanding is the subtle difference between unfurling and puckering. Is when we unfurl the lips, we don't draw the corners, corners of the mouth inwards. So typically a pucker would look like this. There are two features there that, are, that don't apply well to the Einsetzen lip position. Number one is that the, the lips are actually moving forward like this, and the corners are coming in, and the chin is going flat. This is um, this is not <laughs> going to work for an Einsetz and lip position. What we actually need to do is is literally unroll the lips like this, which may look a bit ridiculous. But then when you place the mouthpiece on, you can play these double pedal notes, and they are centered and powerful. Now, in the old Trumpet Yoga book, Callet talks about how you can put as much air as possible through this, this new embouchure. And it does work, um, though I don't really think it's necessary. I really think that we can actually learn to be a little efficient. Because um, in doing this, we're actually creating quite a lot of uh, lip-to-lip -lip compression. Um, the, the lips are, are definitely closed. This is a closed embouchure system. And... Um, and therefore, you know, the, the quantity of air is a little less necessary. So, in 
this video I'm playing on a, an Arnold's and Sons 10.5C mouthpiece. It's a very standard piece of equipment. Believe it or not, this thing actually cost me about 11 euros on, on Thoman. Um, had a bit of a mouthpiece disaster recently that I haven't told many people about, but uh, the long and short of it is that I've lost about £300 worth of mouthpieces, and so for classical slash legit type playing, this is what I'm on at the moment. And this is just my crazy um, hand-built um, balanced model, slightly upturned bell um, trumpet that I, I use for some festivals and jazz gigs and stuff. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's quite an open horn. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to play through some of the exercises. The first thing we need to do is really establish the double pedal register and start to feel the fat feel in the lips. through that in one breath. It shouldn't be too much of a challenge um, if you've breathed properly to play um, this is a, a seven whole note pattern um, at about 80 beats a minute. With practice I can do it at 60. Um, it's a good idea to, to, to push this because you get used to using your entire capacity um, but more to the point you get used to holding holding back and not using it all up at once. So there's not really much mention of tongue position in the trumpet yoga system. Um, it was recommended that you articulate on the lip at all times, but um, ideas such as spit buzzing and anchored tonguing were not really um, were not really there at the time. Okay, so I'm just going to run through a quick um, Anzetsen Einzetsen exercise, which is going from the normal lip position to the Einzetsen unfurled position. And what we actually want to do when we prepare the lips is set them in place before we start. Now, um, there are lots of different ways we can look at preparing the lips. So a lot of people talk about things like set point and all that sort of stuff. But basically, we don't want an, a, a, a lot of tension. We want the, the lips to be closed and together. Um, something that happens as a result of practicing these exercises over a long time is that um, you tend to draw the bottom lip inwards and to, um, slightly under the top lip. This can happen actually as a result of just going That's my, my normal sort of setup. And so that's how I'm going to start. I'm going to go the other way. Now, this is a bit of a voyage of discovery 
Because as you move from the Einsetzen position to the Ansetzen position, the, um, there are a number of things that happen. You know, essentially what we're going after is this interlocking of the lips that I was beginning to describe before. Um, to create a closed aperture, but not one that is, is sealed off and then is e it can easily be controlled by, by air power. Um, the reason that the, uh, the book was called Trumpet Yoga because it was all about holding this unfurled position with the top lip. Now, there were other people out on the internet talking about playing with an unfurled embouchure in the high register. I'm not going to name them here, but I've, I've done it in the past. <laughs> Um, you know, this system was being taught by Jerome Callet back in the 1970s, and he, um, you know, he, was, he wasn't quiet about it. He, he spread this idea around quite a lot, but he's received a lot of criticism in his, in his life, and uh, I think it's for reasons like that that it isn't better known that he's the origin of this, of this concept. Terry Callett definitely had conversations with Maynard Ferguson about embouchure in the 70s. Um, and there's, you know, there are photos from trumpet conferences of, of the guys talking, so. Okay, anyway, um, moving on. Something else that happens when you when you move from Einsetzen to Ansetzen is that basically the um, the, the facing, the interaction, or the alignment of your two lips goes through almost every extreme possi possible. Excuse me, drinking and talking at the same time. Um, well, you know, because the bottom lip comes from out in front of the top lip, all the way through every combination, come perfect alignment, a little bit in front, a little bit behind. And the point is that you will find uh, a kind of balance, um, something that is efficient and closed and works very well, but also feels very relaxed, responds well to um, you know, proper use of air. And I, I don't think it's likely that people will find this the ideal lip position um, just from practicing what you've already got or from practicing standard pedal tones where the instructions are always to strictly keep your lips in the same position. You know, by, by experimenting with actually moving the lips, you, you will discover something that works very well for you. And this is an idea that a lot of people are pretty scared of and a lot of people will vehemently deny the benefits of, but um, I've got my, you know, there, there, are, <laughs> there are plenty, there are hundreds of people out there who have benefited from doing these exercises and um, you know, I will continue to teach it because I believe that it's, it's actually, you know, it's a very modern idea and it takes time for these things to, to disseminate anyway. So, right, I'm just going to play through some, some of this stuff, um, moving from Einsetzen to Einsetzen. Um, I'm not going to push it in terms of range because I'm on a, uh, what I would consider quite a deep mouthpiece. Um, there's an easy G in here, but um, I probably won't go above that. So. Sit up straight for this. <laughs> Let's see.
It's, just, it's kind of huge. <laughs> uh, I can remember, like, I don't know, 15 years ago, I'd have, I'd have thought that this mice piece was tiny and probably unplayable. You certainly don't get any help in the upper register when you're playing on a C cup. And what I'm trying to avoid is just using more air, because it's not the solution. So like I said, there's that G, everything you'd need for classical music, maybe an extra tone at the top. Um, I'm not going to embarrass myself by seeing if I've got an A on this thing, because I don't think I do. I'm tempted. <laughs> if, I, if I tried it and then failed, then I'd just edit it out, so let's not get into that. Okay, well hopefully um, you've gain some kind of insight into uh, the hows and whys of doing einsets and ansets and exercises. Um, I really think that when you're playing on um, playing on certain equipment, you know, something a little shallower and maybe more resistant than a 10.5C, um, you can make a huge sound this way. Um, you know, you are getting, a, like I said, a fair amount of lip-to-lip -lip compression. Um, and you're learning the direction that the lips need to move in. Let's talk in the Trumpet Yoga book about the bottom lip coming inwards and upwards as you go higher, and then the top lip maintaining its unfurled state, so this sort of movement. There's that A. I knew it was in there. I've learned this, um, this, these lip positions, you know, for extended high register, because they very, they feel very similar to doing loud double pedal notes. Actually, that's something else I should mention. I'm going to go back through this video and make notes of the things I need needed to actually say. <laughs> it's quite important to do these double pedal notes loudly. Um, you know, not to the point that you damage yourself, but if you can do a decent cre crescendo diminuendo. get a good feel for this interlocking of the lips. A very vibrant, almost bass trombone-like sound. Yep. 
cuts enough. <laughs>